Hi guys, here I am again trying to refilm the metal marker video. Uh, the last one didn't have any sound, just like Dar's original video didn't have any sound. Um, I don't know, it's a bad coincidence, I suppose. Anyway, the metal marker is a very versatile sort of a unit. You can use it in a few different types of ways to get a uh, electronic etch into steel. You can use uh, like vinyl stencils, you can use nail polish and then cut your design into the nail polish. Um, you could probably coat it in asphalt or no, what do they call it, uh, bitumen, they use asphalt, um, and get that then uh, laser engraved through the asphalt so you could then uh, zap it in. I used to have a lot of trouble trying to find a laser engraver that would actually work on a um, hardened steel knife blank. Anyway, so to use the flash toner stencils, you need to have a pretty high powered camera flash. It needs to be a xenon bulb. Uh, Dar recommends the METS 45 CT ones, um, set to manual and I guess whatever the highest power setting of those is. Um, the message is it won't work if you use your camera flash. Um, you need to use toner based ink, uh, well a printer. Uh, ink jets won't work, it needs to be toner based. Um, you need to print your design onto white paper. Um, I'll show mine in a tick. Um, the iron in the toner is apparently what does the job for you. When you hit it with the flash, with the flash toner stencil overlaid, the iron particles jump and they perforate the stencil and that's what allows the electrolyte to um, access the steel but it blocks the steel everywhere outside your design if you've had a successful um, imprint of your image into the stencil. Um, you'll need a piece of foam to make the stencil that's going to work as a backing to push up against the uh, print that you've made, the stencil and the glass that way there's nice even contact between all three and you should get a nice even impression. Um, you then take it, put it onto your blade. You need to clean the blade with methylated spirits. Having everything nice and clean is the key. Ideally, you'll have a very clean printer as well. If there's lots of uh, loose little microscopic particles of the toner floating around the printer, those will mess up your edge. I make my stencils on the work computer um, it prints out there and then it's just, you know, I don't think the thing's ever been cleaned, they get kind of speckles everywhere. Um, so yeah, methylated spirits on the blade and then you protect anywhere you don't want etched by excess electrolyte flying around the place with uh, just run of the mill. I, I use sticky tape, I think Dar recommends you use electrical tape. Um, outside of that there isn't too much to it. Um, it takes a lot of practice. But uh, the beauty of this system is that you can change your design whenever you want, just print it again. You can change the size to suit different knives. Um, you're not stuck just to having one design. Um, you can get stencil, like flash stencils made. They're a lot uh, more durable than these ones that you can make at home. Uh, in saying that, if you keep them clean uh, in between etches, you probably get three or four goes out of one kind of flash stencil that you've made but I'll um, just quickly go through and show again how it works. Right here guys, so I've got my backing foam, a piece of glass, I've got the image that I want to turn into the stencil and I've got my flash toner stencil. So, very simply, I just place my image in the center there, right way up of course. Now, the flash stencil has two sides, a shiny side and a kind of less shiny side. A lot easier to work out in person. Um, so you put it shiny side down over the image that you want to etch. And then stick the foam over the top of that. Now, such a heavy duty flash, it needs to charge up. I think Gamico might actually have a few of these second hand ones left. Uh, Dar restored these for us. Okay, so that light's come on. It's fully charged. Just press down on the glass and give it a flash. I'm going to do that twice just to make sure. So I can 
take that off then that's sticking on there quite nicely I peel that away hopefully you can see it. it's now put the impression of the word batka into the stencil okay so now just clean the blade up so this has been heat treated and it's a 600 grit finish I believe um, the etching I think works a lot better if you do it on a heat treated blade hardened steel just seems to work much more nicely um, you can see I've taken some crap off there Next step is just to line up my edge where I'd like it to go. So that should work. Okay, so you can see here I've taped as close to where I want the etch as I could. And that'll block anything from being accidentally etched into the blade. Um, now I'll show you how to set up the handpiece. So you want to have the piece of felt. Uh, some felt comes with this unit. You want to have it nice and tight to the front of the contact. Um, it's just held on there with a rubber band. Um, it needs to be pressed firm against the carbon contact that way the electrolyte will allow electricity to pass through um, the etch and into the steel so roughly just get it all in there try not to get too much under the electronic device and I'm being very naughty not wearing gloves here you can see that's pretty well soaked through now so there are two modes there's mark and there's etch etch will dig the steel away mark will redeposit re sulfides into your etch and darken it up now we're actually ready to do the etch i'm going to attach this alligator clip to the spine of the blade now yeah. turn the unit on set the device to etch and what I like to do is usually give it a test for conductivity down on the handle. Yep. Yep. You might have been able to hear it. Straight away, I can hear that there's electricity passing through and it's starting to react with the steel. So I'll just give it a quick pass over where I want it to etch. That's pretty much all it takes. If you go too hard too long, you will breach the stencil and then you'll start to get speckling again. Now I've etched it in. I'm just going to remove the top of the stencil, remove some of the excess that might have gotten through. Just give it a clean to wipe it up. And then I'm going to stick it back down in the exact same spot. I should have done the top first. Now it should just reseat back into the same spot. So leaving it on etch, I'll just give it another couple of passes. Give it a wipe. Pull it back. Stick it down. I'll swap over to Mark now. And this should darken it up and redeposit those kind of darker minerals back onto the surface of the steel. Yeah, I can see you guys probably can't because I don't have an appropriate uh, lens for doing this sort of thing, but that's become quite crisp now. I'll turn the unit off. Hook those. Probably get another etch or two out of that. Clean it up. 